Welcome back to a new video here as well. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a split screen, how to save it as a macro or as an effect. And finally, how later on you can use it on your project and then add more things or edit clips, etc, etc. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is to determine the amount of screens that you want to have. In this case, it's two. So we're only going to need two clips to start off. Why? I'm going to show you why in a second. So we're going to bring these two different like stock footage clips that I have here onto our timeline. And this one has sound, so you can just unlink that and delete that. And this doesn't have this one doesn't have to have any particular uh, length. So we can just cut this right here because we can adjust these later on when you add more clips into your um, split screen, of course. After we have this cut, we're going to turn this into a fusion composition. And that is because we want to see this in the fusion page. Now, these two things are, are going to be our screens. So whenever you add these into any effect or any other clips, these are the two things that will show up in fusion. OK. Try my SV transitions back at suave.com. OK, now that we're here in Fusion, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a mask. And for that, we want both of these to be on the foreground. And in this case, we have this one as a background, so we cannot do that. To fix this, we can actually just add a background node here and we're going to press Ctrl T. That way, the background is as background. And then you can actually just make this transparent or leave these with a color because then you can use this as the actual background of the split screen if you want. But if you want to leave it transparent, you can do that too. That way you can add these on top of some other clip or some predetermined background that you have that you already use. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to use the polygon in this case, but you can use squares or add any shape that you want actually. So, but in this case, we're just going to make these random and I'm going to try to make these accurately. It's not going to be perfect. And if you have these three points, that's enough because then you can just click this close the polar line or press shift O and it will close. And right now already I can see that's not perfect. So I can just move these a little bit more. And then we have that. Now we're not seeing any changes because this media in is still on the foreground. In order to see this change, what we can do is actually just copy these and paste these and we're going to add these as the mask for the other side. After that, we can just rotate the Z to 180 degrees. And it's going to be a little bit too close to the other one. Now, ignore these in. Now, it's not going to be perfect, super perfect. But don't worry, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is so that I can show you how you would go around to make one and that way you can be creative and create your own and just just let your creativity flow. Basically, now, if you do want to add an outline to these, what you have to do is you're going to have to add another polygon here and copy these and turn the solid out and then increase the border width a little bit. And then you're going to create a new background here. And you can make these color white, I guess. And then we're going to connect these here. It has to be basically in front of each of those. So what you can actually do if you want is you can actually just put this in front of everything. And that way, if you make these a little bit bigger, then you will see that there's an outline on the screen that you have here. And that is just an optional set that I'm showing you right here. Another thing that you do need to have when you're creating a split screen is the position or the transform elements, right? So for that, we're going to add a transform element. So we're going to press Ctrl and Spacebar and add a transform to this media in and also add a transform to the media out, the second media in. That way, we're going to be able to adjust this clip like that and zoom these like that. Now, for the sake of this video, let me just create the other polygon real quick for the outline. And the easiest way is probably going to be copy, copying these two. And then we're going to just connect these again there. And I'm going to rotate the Z value to 180 and then copy the positioning of this one. So we're going to actually just right click these and we're going to go to copy. Then we're going to go to this polygon and we're going to go to where it says center. And then we're going to paste the settings that way it's going to copy only that element 
from the polygon and not everything else. Okay, we have our split screens. They're not that perfect in this case, but it's just for the tutorial, of course. After this, we have our split screen ready. What do we need to do next? The next thing that you need to do is to actually save it so that you can later on use it and you don't have to be building these every time. In order to save these, there's a couple of key things that you need to take into account. If you have these background here, which are the outlines, you want to save these backgrounds and you also want to save these transform um, nodes when you're creating the macro. Now, one other thing is that if you animate things or if you add more things, then you might want to have to add those to the macro too. So let's create the macro. To create the macro first, we're going to select the most important ones. So we're going to select these transform and we're going to select these background. Then we're going to select the transform two and we're going to select the background two. That way we sort of have it a little bit in order. After that, we're going to press control A and select create, go to macro and select create macro. Here we're going to select the split screen and we're going to save these different controls here. So the center, you can also save the pivot point if you want, the size, and then the angle and the flip horizontal or vertical. Vertical you probably won't use, but why not? After you do that, you want to do the same thing for the other one, but also, but also save the transform values here. Okay, after you create this split screen, in order to save it and install it into your DaVinci Resolve, what you need to do is you're gonna need to create a DRFX file. That's gonna be the fastest way to create this. For that, we're gonna have to create a new folder here, which is gonna be called edit. But since I already have one here from the test, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go create a folder called split. And then on this one, I'm gonna go in here and create a new folder. And then I'm going to call this edit. Then I'm going to go in here and create a new one again. And I'm going to call this effects because if you save these in another folder, like titles or generators, this is actually going to be different the way that it's applied to the clips. Then after an effects, you can actually create a subfolder again here called split screen. But if you don't want to do that, just save it right here as it is. I'm going to copy these right real quick. That way I can go back and show you the next step. After you save these, nothing's going to happen. So you're going to have to go to the edit page and we're going to have to go to that folder. OK, so we are here on the split screen folder that I just created. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to just right click here and we're going to add to archive. And then here you can write whatever name you want. So split screen tutorial. Save this as a zip file, but don't click OK yet. We're going to delete that final part and we're going to write the RFX. After you press OK, this is going to create a DaVinci Resolve templates bundle file that you can actually just double click. And if you go here to the install split screen tutorial, well, I misspelled that. But after that, you can just install these and you will be able to find these in your FX tab the next time that you restart DaVinci Resolve or maybe right away. Actually, <laughs> as you can see, I have a couple of them. Maybe it did work right away, but let me just go and show you the next step, which is how to actually use these on an actual clip. Now to use these on an actual clip, the process is similar to what we did when we started. So we're going to go and add whichever clips that we have. So we have those same two clips here after we have the same two clips here. You want to create these into a fusion composition. Now, if you have a split screen that has more screens, you just add a third clip here and then we're going to create these as a fusion composition. Now it's going to look like one is on top of the other one. But if we go to the effects window and find that split screen tutorial that we just created and add these, you're going to have that there. Now if we go to the effects here. We can see all the different settings that we just saved. Now, this is not going to be labeled to label these. If you want to know how to label, you can check out these other tutorial, which is actually sort of technical, not sort of. It's pretty technical because you have to go and copy and paste codes, basically. So if you want to know how to do that, check out that tutorial in which I explain pretty much in detail of what the process that I go through when I create macros and I label them and all that stuff. 
Okay, now that we have here, you can actually just position these and adjust the different values here of both of these. And you can actually create keyframes here and animate things if you want to. Now, if we look at these, you'll see both of them just playing like a normal split screen, okay? Now, what happens if you want to, let's say you realize like, oh, there is something I don't like in this clip, or actually you want to adjust the length of these like you cannot adjust the length of these fusion compositions just like that, right? So if you want to adjust the length of these, all you have to do is right click and we're going to open these in a timeline that opens a sub timeline basically. And here we can actually just make these as long as you want and you can actually just move around and then select a different portion of the clip that you want, for example. Now also here is where if you want one of them to show up in the other one, basically reverse them, you can actually do that too. All you have to do is go here and basically put one of them in the second layer and the other one at the bottom. If we go back to the edit page and we play these, now we can see that they moved. We have these other clip on top and we have the second one down there at the bottom we can see them just flying like that there i think that i cover all the details that you would need to create your own split screens now i'm gonna save these as a freebie on the website so if you want to download these go and check the link down in the description that way you can download these same macro so that is it pretty much it for this video i hope it was helpful and i will see you in the next video here in suave bye